Hello, teachers! It's me once again, Teacher Melody Valiente. Okay, so this time, I would just uh, like to give you a short lecture about Module 3. Yes, 3A. Okay, so designing instruction in the different learning delivery modalities. So, I think... And all modules, module 3A is very critical. Uh, ito yung medyo mas may malalim pang or detalyado pang mga uh, information na kailangan ay matandaan natin at maisakatuparan. Because in this module, um, it will focus on how lessons and assessments are designed for the distance learning modality prescribed by the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan. Okay, so here are the objectives of this module. Okay, so as you can see, so by the way, Dapat, as early as now, is nangangalahati na tayo sa ating modules, right? So, kung may tanong kayo, lapitan lang natin ang LAC leaders or facilitators natin. Bibigyan nila kayo ng mga copies ng mga PDF file na to. Or, or kung wala kayong kopya, hindi kayo mabigyan, I will just post the link in this video para makompleto nyo yung mga outputs, expected outputs together with the study notebook na kailangan ma-evaluate after this course. Alright? So, estimated time required for this course is, or for this module is 18 to 24 hours. Pero kakayanin natin yan within 20 minutes, I think. <laughs> okay, let's start. Alright, lesson 1. So, for lesson 1, understanding the different LDMs. Okay, so siguro naman orient na kayo, no? Ano bang LDM ang gagamitin ninyo sa inyong school or sa inyong division, sa inyong district? Ano ba ang mga LDMs na applicable sa inyong school? Okay, so this activity, activity 1, may mga questions lang dito na pwede ninyong sagot ten kaagad kasi alam nyo na may background na kayo sa different modalities na to. Like for example, face-to-face -face or F2F learning. What do you know about this? Diba? Ito yung physical na nagkikita or may interaction ang teacher at ang learners. How about DL? Distance learning, right? So, ito ay maaaring hindi physical Diba? Dahil nga distance na pagkakaroon ng uh, learning. Next is blended learning by the word itself. Blended. Para bang yung blender, diba? Pag meron tayong nilagay na isang ingredient and then the other ingredient may blend. Diba? Okay. Blended learning. And the last one is homeschooling. Okay. So, there are some circumstances na may nag-homeschooling ang bata. Pwede kasing siya ay may sakit, may karamdaman, diba? O kaya naman siya ay nagkaroon ng um, problema sa pamilya na naapektuhan ng pag-aaral, na, nahantong sa homeschooling, o di kaya naman sa maagang pagbubuntis na hindi uh, sinasadya, di po ba? Okay, so this is activity na to. Pwede nga ang lack leader or facilitator ninyo ay magtanong ng mga follow-up questions about this um, four modalities of delivery. Okay. So, now sabi dito, which of the LDMs do not have F2F learning component? Siyempre, hindi na F2F yan. ba? Hindi na rin yan... Mm, siguro, sa blended kasi pwedeng may face-to-face. -face. So, dito tayo sa distance and homeschooling kasi medyo malayo naman yung mag-face-to-face -face dyan parate. Okay, activity 2. Sabi dyan, read the two documents, guidance of the, on distance learning and non-negotiable minimum requirements for distance learning. Okay, so let's start with guidance on distance learning. So, sabi dito, so this guidance is based on draft policy guidelines which are still being finalized and are subject to change. Subject to change, okay? It depends upon the situation. <laughs> Sabi nga nila, guidance contained in this document will be uh, superseded by official policy issuance. Okay. 
First, distance learning. It refers to the delivery modality where a learner is given materials or access to resources. Okay, so he or she will undertake self-directed study, self-paced learning at home or in other venue. Okay, so maraming types ng distance learning. Katulad na nga lang ng gasgas na gasgas -gas na. Pwede ito ay synchronous or asynchronous, digital or printed. Right? Okay. So, there are four types of distance learning. The first one, modular distance learning. It refers to a learning delivery that is in the form of individualized instruction where learners use to self-learning modules in print or digital format. Okay? So, kung sa school ninyo, modular distance learning ang LDM na gagamitin. By the way, who decides if anong LDM ang gagamitin? Diba? Nung nag-enroll sila, nung tinawagan ninyo ang parents para i-enroll ang anak nila, meron silang options doon kung ano yung napipisil nila or gusto nilang modality na gamitin. Well, doon magbe-base ang decision. And also, so, merong mga orientation sa parents kasi pwedeng magbago eh. Uh, for example, ng enrollment, modular distance learning ang pinili ng parent. Pero, siguro nakaluwag-luwag, nakabili ng gadget or may nag-donate sa kanila na laptop and then nakabili sila ng packet wifi, pwedeng mag-online na lang din siya, di ba? Parang ganun. So, ano ba ang decision? Ano ba ang kuwan sa school ninyo? Is it the majority wins or kung ano yung sinelect nila, yun ang i-cater mo? Okay? Just ask your school head. Silang mas nakakaalam yan. Okay? Kung ano yung mas ititake ninyo. Kung majority ba modular, okay, modular na lahat. Kung may nag-modular ba, may nag-online, o oh, pwedeng hatiin ko ng sarili ko. Parang ganon. Okay? Ask your school head. Silang mas nakakaalam ng pagsagot dyan. Okay, next is online distance learning. It refers to a learning delivery modality where the teacher facilitates learning and engages learners' active participation using various technologies connected to the internet. Okay, so this is online distance learning. Well, pag sinabi naman ka kasing online distance learning, not necessary. Kaya nga meron tayong sinasabi na synchronous and asynchronous platform. May times na imimit natin ang ating learners online by means of Google Meet, Zoom, Skype, Messenger, what else? or any platform na tayo ay pwedeng makipag-interact uh, sa kanila or makipag-usap. Ang asynchronous platform or mode naman ay magbibigay tayo sa kanila ng instruction and then pwede nila itong gawin at their own pace or kung may time sila mamaya, pwede nilang gawin. Flexible kung kumbaga. Pero, there is also a limit in a synchronous platform. Let's say, for example, Monday, nag-meet kayo. That is synchronous. Okay? Nag-meet kayo. Google Meet. Okay. Hi, hi students or dear uh, students. So, kumusta na kayo? Tapos, nagbigay kayo ng, ano, ng activity. Okay. So, you will do and read this activity. Blah, blah, blah. And I have some questions there. You would answer the guide questions, reflections there. And then, you, uh, you will submit that on next uh, Friday. Parang ganon. So, sa asynchronous, um, syempre marami pa silang time. Pwede nilang magawa yun bukas o ano. Dahil nag-set ka ng deadline. At hindi mo na rin sila kukulitin bukas na mag-meet kayo kasi alam na nilang gagawin nila. Okay. By the way, uh, mamaya doon sa non-negotiable um, requirements, may matatakal doon kung ano yung mga requirements sa uh, modular, online, and TV-based instruction. Yeah, number three, TV-based instruction, radio-based instruction refers to the use of television or radio programs on channels 
channels or stations dedicated to providing learning content to learners as a form of distance education. Well, I believe noon pa, may TV-based instruction and radio-based instruction na. Pero hindi lang masyadong na-emphasize kasi um, mas tutok tayo sa face-to-face, -face, di ba? Okay, so eto ay mas, I think this is uh, much effective sa uh, primary, sa elementary, di ba? Hanggang siguro grade 8, kanyan. Kasi sila yung mas mahilig manood ng TV at medyo mas natutuwang manood ng TV. Hindi <laughs> na ibig sabihin is mas maano sila, makakatutok sila sa TV. Wala pa masyadong uh, distraction siguro or pwede kasing samahan ng parent manood ng TV. Parang bonding moment na rin habang natututo, uh, may bond sila ng parent or any guardian. Radio-based instruction, well, May mga ka-partner, I think, may mga kamuwa na ang mga division natin na kung saan ay uh, pwede silang magpalabas ng mga educational material sa radio man o sa TV. Okay. So, number four is blended distance learning. It is the combination of the different distance learning uh, type. Okay, so pwedeng MDL or ODL. So, ibig sabihin sa blended learning, ha, hindi lahat ng blended learning may face-to-face. -face. Katulad nito, modular distance learning tsaka online. May face-to-face -face ba? Wala. Ang mag-face-to-face -face, si parent at tsaka si teacher kasi may abutan ng module. <laughs> diba? Okay. Next is, pwede rin mag-blend ang module at tsaka TV-based instruction. Online TV-based instruction. Diba? Okay. So, sa modular distance learning, so, pwede niyo basahin ito, ha? Masyado na kasi siyang, um, na-explain sa mga, ano natin, sa mga webinars natin. So, alam na alam niyo na, modular, online distance learning. Okay, so ito yung mga pwede natin gamitin na LMS o yung tinatawag natin na Learning Management System. Edmodo, Google Classrooms, Schoology, hindi lang limited dyan, no? Marami pang iba. Okay, so ito pala, meron tayong mga suggested number of hours lang na pwede natin silang uh, kausapin online. Lalo na yung mga may synchronous online teaching. So, key stage 1, kinder to grade 3, at most 1 hour daily lang for kindergarten and 1 and a half hours for grades 1 to 3. <clears throat> grades 4 to 6, up to 2 hours only. Grade 7 to 10, up to... 4 hours. Ah, 2 hours. And then grades 9 to 12, most 4 hours lang. At most 4 hours lang. Kasi uh, masyado nang ma-stress sila. Okay? Bakit tayo? Kahit nga 12 hours. <laughs> okay. Alright. Sana tayo niyan. Mm -hmm. So, etong PDF file na to, a Guidance on Distance Learning, pwede nyo itong basahin ulit or i-review para sa susunod na activity. So, non-negotiable minimum requirements naman tayo. So, sa online distance learning, siyempre, kinakailangan meron tayong LMS na gagamitin. Kung medyo may budget, pwede yung may subscription. Pero, siyempre, doon na lang tayo sa libre, di ba? So, go na tayo sa libre para mas masaya. Wala na tayong iisipin pa. Okay. So, kailangan din may te technical expertise or meron tayong mga ICTs na handang tumulong sa mga ano natin, problema natin when it comes to learning management systems. Okay. How about in modular? So, kailangan may orientation ang teacher, parents, and learners about the modular learning. ba? Kasi baka, baka hanggang ngayon hindi nyo pa sila na-orient. Nako, kailangan po may orientation. Um, virtually man yan or papuntahin ng parents sa school pero following pa rin ang protocol, distance, social distancing pa rin. Okay. 
Uh, and then, TV-based instruction. Siyempre, kailangan meron tayong MOA sa ating kapartner. Alright. So, that is activity 2. So, ano naman ang activity 3? So, eto, ira-rank mo. Rank from easiest to hardest to implement. Para sa'yo, anong type uh, ng distance learning ang mahirap para sa'yo? Easiest to hardest and why? So, yan, madali mo na lang yung masasagot, ha? Alam nyo, kapag nag-check ang mga school heads natin or ang mga lack leader natin, ang outputs natin, be honest sa isasagot natin. Hindi pwedeng copy-paste lang. No? Kasi mati-check din yung veracity ng ating mga answers. Okay? The truthfulness. Alright. Activity 4. Okay. So, this activity 4 is one of the requirements of the expected outputs in Module 3A. So, ano ba yung mga targeted intervention mo sa learner group na ito? Meron dito sa dulo na others, ha? Specify. Kasi pwede ka rin magdagdag dito, for example, working students. Right? Kasi may student ang nagtatrabaho, ano pa, um, early parenthood, uh, maagang learner group natin na to, okay? Anong targeted intervention natin dyan? So, siguro dito sa beginning readers, kailangan meron tayong train a parent partner, di ba? To facilitate the intervention or to facilitate the uh, given modality. Diba? So, dito naman, sa medyo ano na sila, uh, kunyari, sa working student. So, give give modules every week. Ano ba yung targeted intervention mo dyan? Okay. So, that is one of the requirements. In module 3A. All right, well done. You have completed lesson one. Now let's proceed to lesson two. Okay, delete ko lang to. Sa mga nagtatanong, anong app tong ginagamit ko? Well, ano to? Class in po. So I will just discuss this in different video. <laughs> okay, supplementary handout for blended learning po. So, may mga activities dito, questions, scenarios, na pwedeng itanong sa atin ng lock leader natin uh, during lock session. So, huwag kayong mahihiyang sumagot o yung mga naiisip ninyo na makakatulong. Kasi etong mga situations na to is real life situations or maybe possible na mangyari. So, kung meron kayong suggestion, o oh, why not, diba? Kasi baka mangyari sa ka-teacher mo yan. So, meron ka ng suggested answer. Okay, let's go on to lesson 2. Designing lessons and assessment in the different LDMs. Oops. Read. Debit Order 42 Series of 2016 on Policy Guidelines and Daily Lesson Preparation. Okay, DLP. Daily Lesson Plan or DLL. Anong ginagamit mo dyan noon? Okay, may guidelines din dyan, di ba? Kapag DLP, uh, ibig sabihin, ikaw si teacher na wala pang one year sa service. DLL, ikaw ay more than one year or more than a year nang nasa service. Okay, so may questions din dyan. What is daily lesson designing or lesson planning? Ano lang yan? Question, opening questions sa lock session ninyo. By the way, sa lock sessions, pwedeng ang lock leader ay mag-assign ng mga speakers or mag-request ng speakers. Not necessarily sila lagi nagsasalita sa harap or nagsisimula ng, ng mga topics. Okay, sa activity 2, merong mga activities na sasabihin si lock leader or si speaker tapos i-identify mo lang. Saan ito nangyayari? Anong part before the lesson, lesson proper, or after the lesson? Siyempre, alam mo na yan, di ba? Kung halimbawa, sinabi, wrap up activities. Hmm. Saan yan nangyayari? Before, lesson, or after. Alright? Next is activity 3, lesson designing. 
and implementation. So, ito parang i-recall nyo lang, di ba? Ano yung parts or components ng DLL or DLP. Okay. So, you know that already. Designing lessons in DL. Okay. Ayan. Meron pa activity ulit. So, check if already present in the SLM. Alright? So, may mga remarks ka dyan. Activity. And then, kailang mag-reflect din to sa study notebook natin. Okay? So, papasadahan na lang natin, no? Kasi para ma... Isa-isa natin yung mga expected outputs natin sa module 3A. Kasi 7, I think, 5 to 7 ang requirement nila dito. Medyo madami compared sa ibang modules. Integrating content across learning areas. Team teaching. Okay. So, dito sa integrating content across learning areas, pero... Dito natin ina-apply, di ba, yung halimbawa may topic ka na pwede rin matouch yung sa ibang lessons or sa ibang subject or pwedeng may topic ka sa subject mo na pwedeng mag-join force kayo ng co-teacher mo, team teaching. That's a good strategy too. Alright. About assessment. So, natapos na tayo dun sa lesson planning, mag-a-assessment ka na or magbibigay ka na ng, ano, ng assessment sa mga learners mo. Paano kaya natin i-deliver ang assessment during this time na distance learning tayo? Okay? So, may review lang dyan. What are the two classroom type or two uh, classroom assessment? So, formative and summative. So, differentiate. And by the way, sa module 3, may mga available na answer keys sa ibang activities na nandoon sa folder niya sa drive. So, kung masisilip niyo yun, nandun yung mga answers. Kaya nga sabi dito, after completing this diagram, look at lesson 2 answer key. Kasi given na yung mga answer keys dyan. So, para makasagot din kayo kaagad, kailangan natin mag-advance uh, study. Policy guidelines in classroom assessment. Okay, so this one, this table is also an expected output in module 3A. So, anong gusto mong itry na assessment method? Sabi kasi dito eh. In your study notebook, recreate the following table and list five methods that you would like to try. Diba? Um, considering the LDM, learning delivery modality in your school. So, for example, short quiz. So, how will you adapt this assessment method in your delivery uh, distance learning? So, sabi niya, I will send a three-item quiz via text message before the lesson. So, parang nagkaroon siya ng um, warm-up question. Based on the responses, I will take note of the common misconceptions and clarify them to the learners during our online session and via text message. Okay, so, pwede pa ang marami tayong mga assessment method na i-ano dito. Let's say, for example, is um, essay, di ba? Or maybe some guide questions. Paano mo ito i-adapt sa distance learning? So, more on online, di ba? You will just uh, post questions. Oh, ah, dahil sabi dito, I will, di ba? Uh, I will post some questions in our Google Classroom. Be specific po kung ano yung mga plan mo or paano mo ito masasakatuparan. Ayan. And let them answer in their own opinion or thoughts. Diba? Okay. So, some follow-up questions in here. During lock session, na yan po. And then, meron din siyang uh, guidelines on preparation of portfolio and e-portfolio. So, eto, medyo ano lang yun. Medyo general yung mga definition ng portfolio, ano ba yung na, um, nilalaman ng mga portfolio. Kasi when we say portfolio, naisip agad natin 
clear book agad, ba? Diba? So, nandun, yan, nandun po yan sa guidelines. Wala pong um, uh, standard ng nilalaman ng portfolio kasi it's up to you, it's up to the content performance standard kung anong nire-require nitong um, outputs from the learners. Okay? And e-portfolio sabi dito. So, when we say e-portfolio, not necessarily a hard copy but it can also be in a soft copy or um, nakasave siya sa mga flash drive, CDs. Okay. True or false game lang yan. And good job. You are done with lesson two. Let's proceed to lesson three. <laughs> lesson three, guiding and monitoring learners in the different LDMs. So by the end of this lesson, sabi dyan, you'll be able to create a home learning or weekly home learning plan. Ito na yung kailangan natin itatak muna sa isip natin ngayon. Uh, weekly home learning plan. W-H-L-P. Hindi muna D-L-L. Hindi muna D-L-P. Okay? Ito ang counterpart kasi. Sa D-L-L, D-L-P, ito yung nandito tayo sa face-to-face. Pero ngayon nasa distance learning muna ang ating modality. Well, Weekly home learning plan na kailangan natin dyan. Tara, tignan natin kung paano gumawa. So, dito meron lang review, no? Parts ito, parts ito ng ating WHLP. Pero, syempre, alam na alam nyo na yan. These are the knowledge, understanding, skills, and attitudes of learners. Syempre, learning competencies. Kaya ko nga muna to. Number two, these are the formative learning opportunities given to the learners to engage them in subject matter. Oh, learning opportunities given to learners to engage them in subject matter. Ano? Ha? Ito ay formative learning opportunity. <laughs> uh, diba? Alam na, alam na natin yan. Okay. Uh, learning task. It refers to the uh, learning area. Method, mode of delivery. Okay. Appendix. So, let's see. Ito po, um, activity lang din to, pero this is not uh, part of the expected output. So, pwedeng itong pag-group activity ng lock leader ninyo. Pwede din kasi gawin sa virtual yung group activity. No, Parang may meeting sila sa ibang ano ibang meeting link. Okay, so let's look at the individual learning monitoring plan template. Iba to ah, iba yung weekly uh, home learning plan, iba din yung individual learning monitoring plan. Okay, later on we will just ano, differentiate that. Okay, yan na pala yung last activity. So let's open the um, weekly uh, home learning plan. W H L P. Okay, pasensya na kayo sa mga aso sa background. Okay, so ang weekly home learning plan po. Ito ay prene prepare ng subject teachers and then isa submit sa advisor para siya ang maglagay sa iisang table na lang. And then, pag nagawa na to ni advisor, bibigyan ng kopya ang parent. Okay? Ang parent, bakit si parent ang bibigyan? Siyempre po, sa kanya nyo ibibigay dahil kayo magkikita, di po ba? Uh, for example, sa school, pupunta si parent para kunin ang modules, kasabay na rin po ang weekly home learning plan ng mga bata, para saan ba ang weekly home learning plan? Ito magsisilbing guide nila na kung saan makikita nila ang day, ang time, learning area, learning competency, learning tasks na gagawin nila, di ba? So, matatrack nila. Naku, alas 9 na, 9.30 na, kailangan ko nang mag-aral para sa araling panlipunan. Titignan niya ngayon. Ano ang learning task ko? Araling panlipunan, module 1, lesson 1. Kukunin niya ngayon dun sa envelope niya. Yung module 1, lesson 1 ng quarter 1, week 1, 
babasahin niya ngayon yun. Okay? So, dito lang kasi hindi masyadong nilinaw. Kailangan dito, i -ano, be specific sa learning tasks kung ito ay babasahin lang, kung may aktibidades na gagawin, no? Kasi para para mas maano nila, mas masundan nila. Kasi kung ganito lang siya. Pero later on may example tayo dito na medyo specific. Okay? So ito ay ibibigay sa parent, syempre ahead of time at para makita na syempre um, papakita din ng parents sa estudyante 'yan. Okay? So, pero mas maganda kasi nang nakikialam ang parent para mas matrack niya. O oh, anak, alauna na. Ano nang subject na titignan mo ngayon? Ay, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. ba? Diba? So, lalo yun. Ay, ESP po pala. Okay, so ganyan. Ito ang ating weekly home learning plan. Okay. So, dito sa mode of delivery, ano ba yung mode na kung paano magpapasa ang estudyante or ang parent ng mga outputs? O, so, yan nakalagay po. Personal submission by the parent to the teacher in school. So, since pare-pareho naman ang nilagay niya dyan sa last na ano na yan, why not ilagay na lang natin dyan? Uh, outputs will be submitted on Friday. ba? Diba? Yan ang mode of delivery. Or outputs will be uploaded via Google Classroom kung online. Okay, Friday, revisit all modules, check, and then meron ng collection and retrieval of modules dyan. Ito, blended distance learning. Oh, ba? Diba? Ito yung sa math, yung sinasabi ko, medyo specific. Oh, present answer. Medyo specific siya dyan. So, kung ang nirequire sa inyo ng lock leader ay specific activities or learning tasks, yun ang gagawin ninyo. Pero kung hindi naman nila na-require, pwedeng in general na lang. Sabi, uh, read the module 1 in anong subject area ito, then answer ito. Hindi mo na ilalagay yung mga mismong tanong or guide questions. Kasi, depende po yan sa lock leader kung anong i-require nila sa inyo. Uh, dahil sila rin ang magre-rate or mag evaluate ng mga outputs. So, sila ang susundin ninyo. Hindi po kayo magbe-base lang sa kung anong napanood nyo sa Facebook, ay sa YouTube na, ay, sabi sa YouTube, kahit ano na lang daw. Eh, kung ang nirequire po ng lock leader nyo ay specific at detalyado, sila pong sundin dahil sila pong magre-rate sa inyo. Okay. So, yeah, medyo specific talaga. Tapos, may mga uh, link pa. Ito sa online to. Online learning to. May mga link. Ayan. Okay, since online learning naman, hindi ko nabibigyan ng weekly uh, home learning plan ang estudyante ko. Siyempre, dapat bibigyan nyo pa rin po. Pero, pwedeng isend nyo na lang sa email ng parent, ba? Diba? Or i-post nyo sa mismong Google Classroom or sa LMS ninyo, learning management system ninyo, para makasave din tayo sa paper. Okay. Uh, and that's it. That is the home learning, uh, weekly home learning plan. Okay, so uh, meron po palang uh, sinasuggest or may nabasa kasi ako dito noon na kailangan before mag-October 5, meron na tayong one month. Meron tayong weekly home learning plan na good for one month. Pero hindi mo ito isang bagsakan na ibibigay sa parent. For example, for the week one, before October 5, nabigay mo na yung weekly home learning plan mo pang one week and then the next week yung pangalawa hindi mo ibibigay all the ready ka na para sa one month hindi mo ibibigay ng isang bagsakan okay syempre naman paunti-unti para may excitement <laughs> all right next is individual learning monitoring plan template Para saan ba ang individual learning monitoring plan template? So, ito ay para parang counterpart siya ng uh, report card. Pero hindi by numbers ang makikita dito. Ibig sabihin, may progress, uh, monitoring, achievement, ano ka dito, reports ka dito. ba? Diba? Kasi, 
ang individual learning monitoring plan template po ay ipinipresent or ipinapakita sa parents every after quarter, I think, or definite uh, period. Hindi siya weekly, hindi siya monthly, or pwede kasing quarterly na lang siya. Dahil meron kang mga intervention na gagawin eh. Ito ba, kailangan ba natin nito sa first day of classes? No. No? Dahil makikilala mo pa lang sila sa first day of classes, eh, paano mo sila maa-assess? Paano mo malalaman kung ano yung needs nila? ba? Diba? So, it will take time. So, siguro one month, two months. And then, anong learning area sila medyo mahina? So, let's say English. Ay, ano po ba yan? Hmm. English. Learner's needs. Ano ba yung medyo kahinaan niya? So, sabihin natin dito is siya ay uh, frustrated reader. ba? Diba? O kaya slow reader. Hmm. Anong modality yung ginamit niyo? Siyempre online ka muna kasi nagkaroon ka ng ano sa kanya. Uh, basta maano natin. Um, tag po dito. ma-justify natin ano yung mga needs nila. Saan sila medyo mahina o hindi makakatch up. Ano namang intervention ang gagawin mo dyan? Strategies. Ngayon, dahil gumawa ka ng intervention, sa monitoring date, pwede ito ay kung anong duration nito. Let's say, for example, lagi kang nagpapadrill. sa slow reader na yan or practice drill. Sa monitoring date na natin dyan, so, for example, is um, December 8, 2020 to January. Oh, 8. Okay. So, sa monitoring date mo, dun makikita kung mayroon ba siyang progress. ba diba? So, ang mga ilalagay po natin sa remarks ng insignificant, significant progress at mastery ay nandoon po sa um, nandoon po sa PDF file ng nandito lang po yan. Appendix of DepEd Memorandum. Yan po. So, weekly home learning plan at uh, Dito po, individual report. Asan siya? Ayan, ito po. Ayan po yung mga ilalagay nating remarks. Ayan. So, kailangan po magkaroon talaga kayo ng copy nito para hindi tayo masyadong maligaw sa mga isasagot natin. Kasi kung umasa lang po tayo sa kokopya lang po tayo sa mga kasama natin without knowing, uh, without, uh, you know, fully understanding the essence of this templates. Hindi po natin siya magagawa, mabibigyan ng hostesya. And then dito po sa last part, intervention status. O, oh, ano bang nangyari dun sa intervention mo? Nagkaroon ba ng uh, naging successful ba? ba? Diba? So, learner is not making any significant progress ba? Or nagkakaroon ba siya ng progress? Let's just continue with the plan and reach the mastery. Mas maganda, ito na yung last part natin, no? Okay. So, hindi lang ibig sabihin English yung learning area. Pwede rin kasing maraming learning area na medyo kailangan niya ng needs. So, isang template na lang pong gagamitin mo kada learner sa bawat learning area. Hindi na tag isang learning area. Di, ang dami niyang template. Medyo mas nakaka-frustrate po yun sa parent pag nakita po nila. Okay, and that's it, I think. Sabi po dyan, before leaving this module, let's take note of the following key messages. There are no perfect lessons, but with careful planning, reflection, and continuous adaptation before, during, and after the lesson delivery, you'll be able to design lessons with your best efforts and maximize learning in this new context. Alam niyo po kung medyo na, ano na natin, nagigets na natin ang, ang diskarte ngayong taon na to sa distance learning natin na to, siguro mas mabibigay na natin yung 
uh, best natin, best efforts natin. Kung mas maiintindihan lang natin, di ba? May maiisip at maiisip kang paraan diskarte para maging mas effective ang delivery. Delivery mo, di ba? Sa panahon na pandemya or ganito, medyo malayo tayo sa isa't isa. This, it is important for teachers to keep track of how the students are doing. Get feedback from the learners. Pwedeng mag-learner self-assessment ka. And from the learning facilitators or household partners. In order to continuously improve lessons to provide support for learners as they learn. Yes, sa isang webinar ko nga, sabi doon, is, uh, pwede tayong makipag-partner sa parents para... Uh, sa absence natin na hindi natin ma-assess ang bata habang gumagawa siya ng demonstration or skill demonstration sa bahay, pwedeng ang parent or a guardian ang mag-assess sa kanya. Yes, meron ka naman kasing assessment criteria na iti-check niya lang kung nagawa niya o hindi. ba diba? Okay, one way of getting feedback from learners is by communicating regularly with them and their families. As teachers, you need to make your presence felt and send a message to the learners that they are not alone in this situation. This will greatly help them to stay motivated. Yes, tama po yun. Sa atin nagmumula ang kanilang motivation. <laughs> diba? Ano pa lang eh, yung kukumustahin mo lang sila, medyo masaya na sila. Uy, kinamusta ako ni ma'am. Kasi malapit na basukan. Yung parang ganun, may excite sila. Although, medyo stress tayo, huwag natin, ah, uh, Ako mga huwag natin ikalat ang stress natin. Dito na lang, dito na lang. <laughs> okay, next. As teachers, you are part of a larger community of learners and would need support from your coaches, school heads, and fellow teachers as you adapt to the new normal. Hindi lang ikaw yan. Marami tayo. Pwede tayong magtulungan to support each other, right? Okay. Now, coordinate with your LAC leader regarding your LAC session schedule for this module. Okay, be sure that you have your module 3A outputs, study notebook, LAC session, and congratulations for completing module 3A. You are now ready for module 3B. Okay, well, maybe this... Uh, following days ay uh, continuous na po ang pag-upload natin ng video and also magpapakita rin tayo ng example ng expected outputs and uh, study notebooks para meron po tayong reference. Pero I'm not 100% sure kung yan ang nirequire din sa inyo ng LAC leaders ninyo. Depende po sa requirement nila. Kasi halimbawa sa unpack King and packing, may mga nagre-require na one whole year ang i-unpack ninyo or i-combine ninyo. Meron naman na one quarter lang or first quarter lang. Ganun. It depends. Basta ang mahalaga, alam natin gawin. Natutunan natin sa sarili. Hindi tayo komopya kasi nagbasa tayo, nag-research tayo at sinubukan natin. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to write them down at susubukan natin yung sagutin. Thank you. See you again next time. Bye-bye.